Hey, how's it going everybody? So in front of you is the most unreliable gun I own and this is a SIG P320 that I purchased back in 2014. I have gone ahead and gone with the voluntary uh, recall upgrade that SIG offers for this model um, to increase the drop safety. Uh, but recently I've been experiencing a ridiculous amount of failure to extracts. It's so bad that I usually have between two and four failure to extracts for each magazine I put through the gun. And this happens with no matter what ammunition I use, whether it be, you know, uh, Winchester White Box, American Eagle, Blazer Brass, my Federal HST, everything. So after doing some digging online, it looked like I should be able to resolve these issues by replacing a couple of uh, components in the extractor assembly. So here's the new extractor on top versus the original one on the bottom. And you can see they look a little bit different. And uh, part of that reason is if you look at the uh, description underneath the part number on the packaging below, it says that the new extractor is tungsten uh, diamond-like coated on top. So it should have an extra durable finish compared to the original uh, part. Uh, another thing I notice is uh, if you look at the part number, it's 1301042-2-R. So I found a lot of information online and a lot of stores listing a dash one dash R and really there was hardly any information from a dash two dash R and the dash one dash R information dash one dash R R information was from late 2019. So this dash two revision might be new for 2020. If we look on the side of the extractors themselves, you'll notice that my original one has no markings and this new one has a 042. Uh, which probably references the last three numbers of the uh, part number base number. And then it has a 06, which is probably a part revision number. I've seen uh, pictures of, of the dash one uh, dash R parts, and those seem to have a lower number than the dash or than the 06 on the side. Looking at the other side of the extractors, once again, the new one has a uh, little marking, a six, whereas the original one does not. And if you look at the claw of the extractor itself, um, it's definitely a sharper point uh, on the new one. And it also has a different chamfer on the inside of the claw. So I know this is a little bit difficult to see, but if you can make it out, the inside of the claw has a different chamfer from the original part, which is on the right, and the new part on the left. So here's the next part that I'm going to be replacing with a new part. And uh, on top I have the new pin and on the bottom is the old pin. And uh, this one's part number is 1301495-R and you can see the description says pin extractor plus. And if you look at these pins, the top pin um, where the spring seat is, is a little bit more towards the right. And that's where the plus is. It compresses or preloads the uh, extractor spring a little bit more than the base one does. So this should uh, give the extractor a little bit more tension and hopefully help it, you know, maintain a grab on the casing as it's extracting it out of the chamber. Another difference seems to be the uh, notch or lug that uh, is used to retain this pin in the slide, but I'm not really sure why that was redesigned. The last new part I bought is the extractor spring itself, part number 1300521-R, and there doesn't seem to be any difference between the uh, latest part and what I originally had. It has the same amount of coils and the wire gauge uh, and free length also look to be the same. So to install these new parts, I'm going to have to disassemble the gun and to start, I'm going to take this and lock the slide back. And obviously you can see there's nothing loaded in there. Then I can flip my lever forward or down so that I can release the slide from the uh, grip. Next, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to depress this uh, pin or detent here on the right so that I can slide the uh, back plate down and off. And to do this, you can use just a, a punch. So I'm going to go ahead and take a punch I'm going to depress this little detent and slide the plate down. Now I can go ahead and just grab the pin back here and pull out this assembly. Moving to the side, I can now release the uh, bottom spring over here and take the barrel out. 
which will let me remove the extractor right here. So to put the new extractor in, all I have to do is take it and just drop it in the slot right here, just like that. Next I can go ahead and put the barrel back in, as well as the spring. So here's the uh, pin assembly we took out of the back of the slide. And as you can see, there's a, a base pin on the left, a spring, and another pin on the right, which interfaces with the extractor itself. And uh, the way that these all connect is the spring just pops onto those uh, little pegs on the other two uh, pins. Um, to get it apart, you just got to grab each side and pull, it apart, pull and pry it apart from each other. So to put the new pin assembly together, I will take the new base pin and just snap the spring on there. Then I'll take this other pin on the other side and just do the same over here as well. Just keep pressing the spring and the pin together until they snap into place. So now we can take this new pin assembly and insert it into the back of the slide. And if you notice this cut out um, on the pin on the right on this assembly, this is supposed to slide over this uh, area of the extractor like so. So when you insert it, you know, you're going to need to uh, rotate or clock this appropriately so it goes over the extractor just like you can see in the fo in the uh, video here. If you don't have that clocked correctly you'll see it stop kind of here and if you rotate it you can see how it moves over so not all the way seated and properly seated. Additionally if you want to you can add some grease to that assembly since uh, it came greased from the factory. Now that the pin is in we can go ahead and replace this back plate and so what we'll need to do is take our punch once again and depress this pin in here so that we can pop the back plate back in just like that. Then we can go back to our frame put the slide on it and then put the locking lever back forward. The P320 is all back together again now so I'll take it to the range and see if this uh, fixed my issues. There we go. Hey guys, so it's been about a month and five to six hundred rounds, couple range sessions since I've installed the new extractor parts into my P320 and I'm very happy to report that I've had zero FTEs in that time. So it looks like, uh, you know, the revised extractor part with a different claw shape, um, just getting a new uh, extractor spring, which the design hasn't changed since the original, and that new spring base pin, which we saw, you know, preloads the spring a little bit more to provide a little bit more extractor tension, um, really has done the trick in solving my FTEs, right? I was going from two to three a mag, every 10 rounds here in California, uh, to having zero. So I am very happy with that. So if you're seeing the same issues that I was seeing, um, you know, this looks like a good way to try and resolve them. Uh, it's just a couple parts and roughly about, you know, $40, $50.